Welcome back to season three of Beyond Caladagia, the show that takes you behind the scenes of the Caladagia universe. I'm Jason, the creator of Legends of Caladagia, and now this game here, Caladagia Fleet Commander, which of course is going to be for sale on June 30th, 2015. You can pick a copy of that up over at the game's website at caladagia.com. But now we're going to talk about what we've been talking about the entire season, which is my tabletop game design process using Fleet Commander here as an example. So let's dive into the details of the beta phase. It's always good to begin by defining the terms I'm talking about. So the beta phase is the second phase of my tabletop game design process, and it's the largest one of the process. It's mainly about filling in details, fixing bugs, and standardizing terms. It's, it's also during this process where you're going to open up playtests into a much larger audience. And your goal by the end is to take all the ideas you had from the alpha design phase and kind of roll them in to a complete and solid rule set. So how do you know when you're finished with the alpha phase and ready to move on to the beta phase? Well, at the end of the alpha phase, you're going to have some complete rule sets such that one of these sets you basically take to a new group of players and have them play all the way through the game from the start to the finish. Now of course sets in the sense that you can take have different sections you can swap in and out so you don't have to have the final rules by the start of the beta phase but by about midway through this phase you want to have your final rules done all the main decisions made anyway so you can start filling in details and fixing bugs. Debugging a tabletop game is, comes in many forms. First of all, the most important one is game balance. Is something being used too much? Is an ability seem too powerful or one too weak? All those kind of things. Just kind of keep tabs on what your players are doing throughout the playtesting, and you're going to start to notice trends as to what's really powerful, what's not, what's preferred, what's not. And from that information, you can derive kind of what's in balance and how, just how balanced your game is overall. Another bug you're going to run into is simply missing and incorrect stats and rules. When you're cranking out alpha design kits, it's very easy to forget very important pieces of information, whether it be in a card, on a stat card, or whatever it may be, or even a unit token or something like that. So whenever you run into a situation like that where you forgot something, be sure to make a note of it so the next time you go around to make a beta version of your game, it gets added in It doesn't kind of keep being pushed on through to production. Sorting out details and clarifying things is a major part of the beta design phase. As you expand your playtest into larger groups of people, people are going to come back with all sorts of questions and want to know like, well, how does this rule interact with this rule, or what does this really mean, or this rule just doesn't make any sense, stuff like that. So as those things come up, be sure to write them down and then after the playtest session, you want to go back and integrate those questions into your existing rules in such a way that you're trying not to add additional stuff, additional mechanics, additional terms, whatever it may be, to answer those questions or increase or resolve the clarity or whatever it may be. Ideally, if you can, maybe try rearranging some rules or just use different words in your rules to kind of answer those questions and provide the clarity without adding extra bulk, detail, and that kind of stuff to your rules. Standardization is another fancy term that I use, and all that really means is you want to use the same word to describe the same thing all throughout your entire rules. So for example, you want to refer to your dice as a d6 or a die, it's your choice. You can do it either way, but you want to keep it kind of all the same all throughout the rules. Another example with Legends of Caladagia, as that game was being developed, I refer to warships as both warships and capital ships during the development process. Eventually the term capital ships was dropped and everything was changed over to warships just for clarity and simplicity purposes. Now ideally during the beta design phase you want to start looking for your printer or manufacturer because the printing process puts constraints on what you can and cannot do for your game. You know simple things like obviously a stack card is only so big so you can only put so much stuff on it legibly but also various components must be purchased in sets of certain numbers. For example cards can really only be purchased in sets of 18 oftentimes. So you can't have a 15 card deck, you can't have a 20 card deck, you can have an 18 card deck, you can have a 36 card deck, you have a 54 card deck, but you can't have a 21. So you know, you gotta consider things like that as you design your game. And of course, if you're going down the print on demand route, 
the cost to regain is gonna go up really, really fast. That's gonna put one more constraint on the quantity of components you can have. As the beta phase goes along and things become finalized, it's time to start working on your art assets. Things like your token artwork, any kind of icons, and of course character artwork, or just box artwork in general. Now for Legends of Keladash, I've always done my own artwork just because I have never had the money to hire an artist to do a nice piece of artwork for me. And while no one has ever told me they didn't buy my game because they didn't think my artwork was good enough, the reality is when your game's sitting on a shelf and has got to compete with other games, a really nice piece of artwork is going to make it stand out and make it pe catch people's eyes. So in retrospective, the one thing I would have done differently early on is I would have gone ahead and you know paid the money to get one, at least, at least one really nice piece of box art for Legends of Caledagia. Playtesting is a major portion of the beta design phase, so much so I'm going to spend the entirety of the next episode only on playtesting. But for now, what you need to know is there's several different types of playtesting during this phase. Well, there you go. That's a pretty good overview of the beta design phase. I mean, there's plenty more details in each of those sections, but this should give you a pretty good idea of at least where to start anyway. If you have any questions about the beta design phase, tabletop game stuff in general, or the Caladagia universe, you can send me an email at caladagiagames at gmail.com. And I can probably answer that question sometime on a future episode of the show. But for now, if you want to learn more about Legends of Caladagia, or you want to pick up a copy of Caladagia Fleet Commander, you can do so over at the game's website, at least come June 30th, at caladagia.com. Once again, I'm Jason. Thanks for watching.